All right, terrible story. Terrible story. Uh, Biden Harris administration continues to blame Israel after Hamas killed six more hostages, including an American hostage. And they've said nothing about the American hostage. And you can see the tear sheet from today's Wall Street Journal editorial. It's very important. Hamas murdered six hostages. Israel is blamed. They were killed in Rafah, where Biden and Harris delayed Israel's entry with threats and by withholding weapons. It's an incredible story. And we have two foreign policy experts. We welcome back Robert O'Brien, former Trump national security advisor and hostage negotiator. And Brian Hook is a former U.S. special representative for Iran. Uh, gentlemen, welcome. I appreciate it very much. Uh, Robert O'Brien, I begin with you. Uh, just before Israel could get there, Hamas shot these hostages. They shot an American, too. Why aren't we doing something? Why aren't we talking about this? Why aren't we taking aggressive action here uh, with American forces, if need be, with SEALs, if need be? How can Biden now just linger about futile Hamas negotiations, holding back Israel again, and not doing a thing about an American hostage that was shot, as well as the other Israeli hostage? I do not understand this, uh, Robert O'Brien. I don't understand it. Larry, I don't either. And I'll say this is the first show I've done since the, since Hirsch Goldberg was killed. Uh, and I was afraid to go on Twitter or, or go on TV because I was going to say something so intemperate. Uh, I'm so upset and heartbroken. The, fir the first thing I want to do, Larry, is, is just tell the, the Gold Goldberg parent, Poland parents, Rachel and Jonathan, who I've gotten to know of by, over several phone calls over the past year, uh, how much our heart goes out to them and the condolences they have for all, all of us Americans. We're, we're just devastated by the Hirsch's loss. He was a beautiful young man. He was, he was doing nothing more than going to a music festival to, to enjoy a, a night like my kids have gone to Coachella. He was doing the same thing in Israel. His arm was blown off. He survived for a, a, almost a year, a total survivor, a warrior. And uh, we just mourn the loss of Hirsch. And, and listen, for, for Rachel and Jonathan, there's nothing more you could have done. I, I've seen parents as a hostile envoy fight for their kids, and no one's done a better job fighting for their kids than, than you have and for Hirsch, and I'm just so sorry he's not coming home to you. But, Larry, what it says is that there's a broader point to be made here. The Hamas executed these hostages, and it's not just Hirsch, it's the five others who are great, great young people. They executed mobland style with point-blank bullets to the head, and they did it knowing that Hirsch was an American, and knowing that we've got two carrier battle groups off, off the shore. But they knew there was going to be no repercussions for their terrible, heinous acts. They knew there would be maybe some words spoken by Karen Jean-Pierre at the, the podium, but nothing would happen to them. And just contrast that to President Trump with ISIS, who killed far fewer Americans than, than Hamas has killed on October 7th and, and, until today. We destroyed every last inch of the physical caliphate, a caliphate the size of, of Great Britain. And then we brought justice in a daring raid over 1,500 miles behind enemy lines to Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi and brought him justice for killing the, the Americans that he killed. None, none of that's happening today. Under Ronald Reagan, you remember when Leon Klinghoffer was killed on the Achille Loro cruise ship? Reagan said, you can run, but you can't hide. And we sent F-14s up to intercept the, the plane that was, that was trying to whisk these terrorists to, to freedom. None of that is going on here, and it, it's a shame. We've lost total respect from our adversaries, and I think we're losing respect from our allies, because instead of going after the bad guys, we're, we're complaining about Benjamin Netanyahu, the elected prime yeah. minister of a Democratic ally. That's the part. Terrible thing. I don't, I mean, Brian Hook, um, I'll just read you from the editorial. The way it looked Monday, a day after Israel said it recovered the bodies of six hostages, they were executed in a Gaza tunnel only a day or two before Israel reached them, shot multiple times at close range. Now, Brian, those are the facts, dreadful facts, but those are the facts. Ryan, I do not understand what this administration's response is. Israel, as far as I can tell, Israel has agreed to at least two of these Hamas hostage ceasefire deals. It is Hamas that pulls out of this. It is Hamas who executed these uh, poor people, including the one American. It isn't Israel. And the enemy is Hamas. So my question to you, Brian, is... What are we doing? What is this government, this administration doing? Or better, what should they do? Larry, I like the way that you assess the situation. I agree with it completely. I also agree with everything that my friend Robert said. 
The Biden administration has lost deterrence in the Middle East. And President Trump, when, when we were in office, had restored the deterrence that was lost under President Obama. And I feel like this is Groundhog Day, mm. that these successive Democratic administrations keep losing deterrence in the Middle East and the consequence is that Americans end up getting killed as a consequence of a foreign policy that has not been successful. And the Biden, the Biden Harris administration seems to have a foreign policy of admiring the problem and then blaming our friends when things go wrong. They need to be blaming Hamas. As you said, Larry, Hamas is the problem. Mm. The leader of, of Hamas has not agreed to a number of deals that the Israelis have agreed to. I personally don't think there are any terms that would be acceptable to Hamas that would also be acceptable to the United States and Israel. I think the Biden administration needs to start showing a great deal more support for Israel. And ultimately, they have to get after the root of the problem, which is the Iranian regime. Let's talk just a moment quickly, Brian. The Iranian regime, very, very important. That's the funding. That's the backbone. You can't play ball with them. I mean, don't we need, we need to enforce the sanctions. We need to stop the oil flows. We need to stop the foreign exchange reserves. We need to tell Iran, I mean, I, 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 we need to tell Iran with all this hardware, you've got a lot of U.S. military hardware now in the region. Okay, let me put that. This poor American was shot. The other five were shot, executed at close range. I mean, it's hideous type stuff. With all the American military hardware, Brian Hook, what should be done? Why will not we, United States government, exercise some power and some authority to deal with this? It's not enough just to simply have American forces or carriers in the region. The enemy or the adversary also has to understand that the president of the United States, the commander in chief, has the will mm. to then, yeah. you know, right. follow through on right. the threat. And right now, we don't have the credible threat of military deterrence. We had that under President Trump. We've lost it under this administration. It's, it's easy to lose and it's hard to, to sort of gain back. But we certainly can do it if we would simply get the credible threat of military force back on the table and go after the money, all of these terrorists bank at the same address. Right. It's in Tehran. Uh, Robert O'Brien, I'm going to give you the last word. Time is short. But there's no point in having all this hardware if we're not going to use it. Uh, the Israelis took care of the civilians in Rafah. You know, Vice President Harris said she claimed a Rafah invasion would doom civilians. I've studied the maps. There's nowhere for those folks to go. But the editorial points out Israel evacuated two in two weeks. They evacuated a million Gazans. Now the point is we have to do so. Hamas has attacked the United States again, just like they're attacking Israel, Robert O'Brien. It seems to me every now and then You've got to use force that's available to you. Give you the last word. Well, Brian Hook's absolutely right that this leads back to Tehran. And uh, we had cut off Tehran. They didn't have money to support the Hamas terrorists. They didn't have money to support the Hezbollah terrorists. Uh, under the Biden-Harris administration, the spigot was open. They went from $4 billion in foreign currency reserves, which was almost nothing. They could barely keep their budget alive, to having $150 billion to, to spread out among these terrorists. And those terrorists struck. And I, you know, I, I called on your show, you'll remember this, Larry, and just after October 7th, I came on. And I said, we've got exquisite capability to rescue hostages mm. in SEAL Team 6, uh. in Delta Group. We, we need to get, the, Israel has get great capability, but there's a lot of hostages, there's a lot of tunnels to cover. Yep. We need to get our, our folks forward deployed, get those SEALs, get those Delta yep. operators who are just masters at this. Why weren't they there a year ago looking for our American citizens, hostages, yep. and, and looking for Israeli hostages and trying to rescue yeah. them. That's what they're trained up to do. That's what they want to do. They wanted to be out there. They All wanted right. to be there looking for Hirsch. And, and we kept them back. And, and right. that's, that's inexcusable. Yeah. Thank you, gentlemen. Two national security experts, Robert O'Brien, Brian Hook. We appreciate it very, very much.